the day after i got home from a ravel yesterday and was understandably exhausted it was such a good day like i knew it would be fun but i, I completely underestimated just how fun it would be what do you need darling <coughs> So my husband's nipped out, Penny's asleep, and Jeff is just chilling out. Um, so apologies if I get interrupted again. So yeah, it was incredible. It was such a long day. So um, my friend Anna drove to me. <sighs> okay, now I need a coffee. Oh, I spilled. Should we try again? So yeah, Unravel was amazing. My friend Anna got to me for about eight o'clock in the morning and then we set off from my house. And it took us about an hour and a half to get there and it was a really easy drive and I was quite nervous about the drive, but it was absolutely fine. And when we got there, I was a little bit like, I was nervous and full of adrenaline and I was like a bit shaky and a bit like, oh my gosh, starting to feel a bit overwhelmed. So Anna was like, should we just have a coffee first? And I was like, so we found one of her friends that was also going and we sat down and had a coffee and a pastry and just kind of regrouped for a minute really and kind of took it all in and was like right okay let's go it was massive it was so much bigger than i thought it would be like i don't really know what i expected but i thought maybe like one big room with stuff in but there was loads and loads of different rooms and a really lovely cafe and it was just brilliant and obviously like full of people who love to knit and do yarn crafts so it was like i'd come to my spirit home it was so so good and we spent a lot of time like spotting people's jumpers and um guessing what the pattern was and trying to remember what the patterns were we saw a lot of love notes we saw um what else did we see so many stephen west shawls we definitely need to make a bingo card for next year but yeah i was so so pleasantly surprised um and I think the main, the main reason I decided to go to Unravel was ob obviously for like the things, to the things that you could buy. But the main reason I did it was for the social side of things. Now, if you know anything about me, you might know that I struggle with that kind of thing. <laughs> the idea of like going to a new place and talking to strangers and people I've never met before normally would just be like, hell no. But... I don't know, I just had the urge to step out of my comfort zone and buy these tickets and, and go there. And I'm so glad I did because I got to spend so much time with some awesome people. I was hoping that I'd bump into some other podcasters, which I did, but I actually got to spend quite a lot of time with lovely Jonathan and Sophie of the Knit Pearl Girl, who um, designed the Aosta. If you're not following her on Instagram, go over there. Um, I think she vlogged as well, so that'll be exciting to see a video from her. But yeah, we got to spend loads and loads of time together, which was really nice, because we, we talk online all the time, and you feel like, oh, well, these are my friends, but then there's that part of it that's like, well, we've never actually met, so are we? And now it's like, I feel like I can say, yes, we, we really are friends, and I had such a good time, and I'm just gonna, like, keep gushing. <laughs> so, let's show you what I got. I... The only thing that I knew I wanted to come away with really was a project bag. Now obviously I've got the project bags that my mum makes for me um, and they're brilliant because they're big and get lots in them and they're good for kind of like transporting between places. However, I wanted something that was going to be kind of more portable like in general. So quite often, mainly on the days that I'm on my own and the kids are at nursery actually, I'll often go into town, do a few jobs where I only need to take my like my wallet. I, I don't need a key because the car doesn't have a key. And But I want to take my knitting with me because I'll usually find the time to sit in a cafe for half an hour. But I don't want to take a big old project bag with me. And I also don't want to put my knitting in my like backpack because that's like full of snacks and wipes and mum stuff. Um, so I was like, I want a project bag that is going to be good for using as an actual bag as well. Something a little bit more utility, something quite hard wearing. And... Before Unravel, I didn't look at any of the stall holders that were going to be there. Some of them had popped up on my Instagram, but I hadn't looked at all at who was going to be there. When we got there and sat down for a coffee, I got my program and I had a little look. And one of the first things I saw was Hide and Hammer. Now, if you've watched the Jonathan Days podcast, you will know that he is a big old fan of the Hide and Hammer. 
and I finally understand why. The moment I saw them in real life, it was just like, this is the one. And I didn't buy one straight away. I went around the whole show and had a look at everything and I did see a few of the nice ones. I saw some really beautiful project bags at the Fiber Fox, which I'll link below. And lots of other little kind of like beautifully sewn handmade ones but they weren't the type of bag that I would like carry around with me I wanted something that looked more like a bag so when I got to hide and hammer it was like this is it's going to be the one I didn't need a massive one um because if I'm going out and about I tend not to take sweater projects or if I do it's like the beginning of a sweater project when it's not very big yet or it's socks or an accessory or something um so I had a little chat with a lovely lady can't remember her name but I'll pop it below and obviously I'll link hide and hammer below but I had a really good chat with her and she was talking to me about the one that I chose and she was like you can get about 300 grams of yarn in it and I'm like that little piece of information is like what you get when you go from a small business who loves what they do and makes all their own products it's like you know exactly how much yarn will get in that bag and that's the information I needed so she said 300 grams of yarn comfortably 200 grams if you want to have your phone and your wallet and stuff in there as well so are you ready it took me ages to decide she had some leopard printy ones which i was so close to getting but then when i thought about like my favorite wool coat that i wear and the kind of colors that i wear like it didn't really go with any of that and this is something that i want to have as like an accessory it's like a almost like a garment in itself anyway here's what i got it's called the number three and i went for this kind of ochre mustard tan color because i mean it's it's just so me and the handles are almost exactly the same color as my wool coat so yeah and i'm so so pleased with it i'm so excited to like get out with it and take it knitting so take it knitting take it somewhere for knitting oh my god you see i'm still a little bit like adrenaline from yesterday so as you can see and i'll do some cutaways i don't really need to say that anymore do i um so we've got leather and and metal hardware and you can adjust the length of your strap here and then it just pops off here and it's kind of like it reminds me of like a paper bag like and i really like that kind of like shape and that feel i like that if i really needed to i could put quite a bit of stuff in here and just like carry it um or it just like folds down to close it and there's no like zips there's no like drawstrings or anything it's just compact and everything you need um so I, oh, i've actually put all the other stuff that i bought in here because i did actually end up buying 300 grams of yarn and <laughs> i wanted to see if it fitted which it did so this is what it looks like in general. This is like the handle you use for carrying it. And inside, I think the idea is you fold it down. I'll do a quick botch job of it. But inside you have, I get like so cleverly thought out. You have one, one big pocket where you could chuck your phone in or whatever. And then you've got, you can see from the outside actually, you can see the stitching. This is the stitching of the pockets on the inside. So you've got some really long, slim pockets. Perfect for knitting needles like you wind up your circulars and you pop them in and i could um like your measuring tape and all that kind of stuff so it's the perfect bag designed for this craft but just so beautifully done so tasteful and modern and in my opinion worth every penny definitely higher end for sure and it's probably not something i'll be buying all the time but if I get on with this one, I can definitely see myself owning some more. She had these beautiful ones that were like little bucket bags with a long strap designed for knitting whilst walking. And though I don't really have the opportunity to do that at the moment, it is something that I can do and I do quite enjoy doing. So I'm going to keep those in mind for future. So that was probably, that, well, that was my biggest purchase and the one I think I'm the most excited about. So we did two like loops of everything we went around the first time to kind of scope everything out and then we went on the second time to do the purchasing but on the first time i did buy a skein of sock yarn because i knew i was really really drawn to it i've got an idea for a sock pattern in my head and i thought this would be really perfect for it it's a cable sock pattern so i didn't want anything speckled or variegated or anything like that i wanted something neutral and warm but still tonal so when i saw this which basically matches this i was like hell yeah and it's from a dyer called 
uh, Rainbow Heirloom, hand dyed in Edinburgh. Never heard of this person before. She was really lovely. She had loads of different colours and different bases. And um, I've lost my train of thought. She had loads of different colours and bases. And I was just very, very, very drawn to this one. It's my my perfect colour. I'm really feeling drawn to browns at the moment and beige and greyish and warm and neutral. And this is just a classic sock yarn. So 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 metres. Generous. So yeah, this will be becoming a pair of socks sometime soon. I'm not sure how soon, but pretty soon. So yeah, that was my first yarn purchase. And then my second and only other yarn purchase was not planned. So I don't really have any yarn needs at the moment. And I, so I told myself I was only going to buy something if I was really drawn to it and could think of a project that it would be used for and that I wanted to make. And that happened right towards the end. And again, like heavily inspired by Jonathan, we were at the Walcott, yeah, Walcott, is it Walcott? Walcott, 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 Wal, Walcott, Jonathan, you tell me, Walcott yarn stall, which I'd seen before and I'd looked at it all and I was like, oh yes, no, I've heard of this brand, I've seen it before, um, but I wasn't particularly drawn to anything and I didn't see the yarn that I bought the first time round. Then when we were going around the second time and obviously Jonathan was with us, so he was chatting with the owners and stuff, I had a little bit longer to kind of look and right at the bottom of their display was this. For the girl who isn't normally into colour, then I'm going to surprise myself with this. However, I do not intend to make myself something with this. I couldn't wear this colour, but my children could. So this is the Walcott Yarns Opus, and I, could, I couldn't believe how soft it was when I touched it. It's 70% Argentinian Merino, not Superwash, and 30% Baby Alpaca, and you can tell. It's just... It's like merino and then some, because this is merino, it's not super wash, and it's still got, it's very, very soft, but it's got a slight dryness to it. This is the double Sunday from Sunday's Garn and Petite Knit. Whereas this has a, just a little bit more of a smoothness and softness to it, and that'll be from the Baby Alpaca. And this colour, it just filled me with so much joy. I've got a feeling it's because one of my test knitters for the souffle is doing a bright yellow one, and I'm so excited to see it come to life. And I think this colour has just been in the back of my mind and so when I saw this I was like wow and then I thought oh little sparks mini I need to make another one because the red one that I made for P is in a yarn that I won't recommend for the pattern because it's too too thin it's too fine um so I needed to make a new one anyway and when I saw this I thought well it's DK it's three to four millimeter needle so it might be a bit small but fortunately Jonathan was wearing a jumper completely knit in opus so I was able to kind of like hold his sleeve up to my sleeve and like the stitches look pretty much the same and his was knit on 3.75 millimeter needle so I thought well if I go up to four then we should be all right so this is going to become a little sparks mini one that I can hopefully suggest the yarn for and I do really like the idea of, of being able to recommend a smaller British yarn um maker within my patterns um obviously i'm all about the big yarn as well like i'm i'm not a yarn snob i'm like it's all good for me but if i can you know go local then i will so yes i saw this i thought little sparks yellow and then i think it was anna was like oh yellow for the top like a sunshine and then it was just like ding 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 everything lined up and it was like yes oh my gosh can you imagine so where it's white here this would be yellow and the bottom part of it would be white so it would look like a little sunshine i'm a little bit worried i don't have enough of this but i think it's not going to be difficult for me to get more of this um, this is exactly the same but in the white this is oh the color by the way this is splashed white and this is bumblebee um so yeah if i need more of this i can get more of this now, this was, again, it, it describes itself as indulgent fibre blends and the price definitely reflects that. I think this was £24 a skein, so expensive. However, I think you're getting what you pay for here. It's, um, Walcott yarns are ethical, sustainable and I think 
that's reflected in the price. And obviously I bought a very small quantity of it. A little bit indulgent for a child sweater potentially, <laughs> but I'm gonna make it in my son's size. So he can wear it now if he wants to, and when he's too big for it, my daughter can then wear it. Or I'll just keep it and it will be beautiful for photos and like something to have. So yeah, there you go. That was probably my main yarn purchase. And I'm so excited. Honestly, I've had to use all my willpower not to um, wind this up last night and cast it on. Even though I've got like three design projects on the go at the moment. But I think one of the reasons I've been held back with working on this pattern and getting it finished, edited and tested and stuff is I knew I had to knit another one of the kids and I just wasn't inspired to do that. But this yarn has fully relit that fire. So yay! And then one tiny little final purchase, which was again, inspired by Jonathan. Can you just be my personal shopper, Jonathan? Like, honestly, that would be the dream. When we had done our first like loop around, we were all a little bit hungry. I need a little bit of a minute. And I was a little bit overwhelmed and felt like I wanted to like sit and knit for a little while and just take a minute. So we went and got a sausage roll and a drink and sat down and then we all started knitting. Me and Anna were working on our souffles. I'm making a black one. She's one of my test knitters and is making this gorgeous teal one. And Jonathan was working on some curio socks and he was using little teeny tiny little needles. And I was like, oh God, how can you do it? How can you do it? I just can't. And he was like, oh, with my needles, one is longer than the other. And I was like, Ooh, he let me have a little go. And the problem I find with really small circular needles is those tips, the way I knit, I hold my needle quite far down in my right hand. Oh my God, I literally just did the left and right thing in my right hand. So to be knitting like this with two like tiny little tips, I can't do it and it feels very strange and uncomfortable in my hands. I know I, I know I could probably get used to it, but I don't particularly want to. But I am starting to get a little bit like, Magic Loop is great, it's fine, but it does take that little bit longer to get through those sleeves and through those sock legs because you're constantly like changing it around. And I do it quite mindlessly now, I do it like pretty quick. But if I could get to grips with small circulars, I feel like it would help me speed things up. And at the moment, I cannot keep on top of my own ideas. I cannot knit my designs quick enough. So if this can help me speed things up, brilliant. Anyway, it is the Sock Wonder. And that was my that was my Jonathan Day voice. <laughs> um, yeah, sock wonder. And so it's by Addy, and you can see that one side is teeny and one side is a little bit longer, and you hold this in your right hand. So um, I don't know how it would work for continental knitters. I guess it would still be the same because you're still picking with your right hand. But for me, as an English um, continental picker, continental. Yeah, is it picking? And then I'm an English flicker, so I don't really like pick up my yarn and wrap it round. I just kind of like blub it round. So for me, it's kind of like between continental and English. But for me, I think these could be really good. The only problem was the stall holder that had them didn't have them in 2.5, which is what most people knit socks on. So I couldn't get them for socks, but I thought, well, I'm about to hit the sleeve on my, on my black souffle. So I'll get the four millimeter needle and see how it goes for the sleeve. And then I've ordered some 2.5s from Amazon. So I'm really excited to give these a go because like, I think it's always a good idea to try something new as a knitter. It's good to try different needles. It's good to try different ways of knitting purely for hand health and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that was what I got from Unravel. I had such a wonderful time. I even got to meet some of you guys, which is really, really nice. I spoke to a few of you and it, it was just really nice to meet real life people. Like, I didn't quite know what to say a few times, but it was really, really lovely. So thank you to those of you who came up to me and said hello. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I cannot wait for next year's Unravel. There's another one in September, but I'm not sure if I will need to go then. And I think in September, I'm gonna do like a craft show with my mum and my sister. So I don't know if I'll do Unravel again this year. However, I'm definitely going next year and I'm booking a hotel room. I'm going for a night out afterwards. And if anyone wants to join, wicked. So thank you for watching this little extra bonus video all about Unravel. I will be filming the next episode of the Knitting Pickle podcast in, a, in the next week. I was supposed to do it last week, but I was not well. 
I had a rough week, my husband was away, Penny basically didn't sleep, I didn't sleep, and on podcast filming days I just had zero energy, and I didn't want to like fake it, because that's not cool. So I'm feeling much better now, and looking forward to filming on maybe Wednesday, because I've got a lot to talk about. I won't feature this stuff, obviously, because I've already talked about it, but yeah, there's lots to catch you up on. So I will see you in the next episode. Have a fabulous day. Bye. I'd still love you anyway